our team uh, thought they played really hard right till the end. Uh, obviously, a disappointing finish for us, but uh, congratulations to Purdue. Open up for questions for our student athletes. <coughs> uh, for for Marin, what did Purdue's defense do to, especially in that first half, to, uh, you guys looked uh, pretty uncomfortable trying to get things going on the offensive end? Yeah, I mean, credit to Purdue. Uh, they had a good defensive scheme going on. Um, they got out in passing lanes, uh, they're long, they're athletic, and that makes you think twice about a lot of plays they would normally make. They definitely did what they were supposed to do. Meryl, yeah, you guys fall down that big early on, and did you spend the whole game kind of fighting your way back? How much energy does that expend from a whole team to try to get them to fall down like that? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's more energy is just the value in each possession. Each possession is so significant when you're down. Um, so maybe that brings extra energy, but I mean, cut it to our girls, we fought. Like, we fought the entire game. Um, just, you know. Mary, can you, mm -hmm. just what, what did um, Ariana Harris produce Pope to do inside uh, to you guys, especially her defensive presence? It seemed like uh, Gets 32. Her defensive presence uh, seemed to uh, give you guys some, some problems being on the inside. Yeah, I mean, they're long, they're athletic. Um, she's a great post. Uh, offensively and defensively, she did what she was supposed to do. Um, we were able to kind of counter it, but I mean, it does take some adjustment. This is Big Ten, you know. We don't see these good, 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 strong, tall athletes um, often, you know. Um, <laughs> credit to her, she did her job tonight. Jessica, you guys obviously played Notre Dame here earlier this season in a really tough non-conference schedule. Where would you put Purdue in terms of the toughest teams you face this year? Um, I don't know how I'd rank it, but they're definitely out there. They have a lot of fight in them, and we did too. And they just brought it earlier than we did. I thought we brought it the rest of the game, you know, but they just happened to have a little spark ahead of time. And then you kind of talk about these bigger girls that you're going to be facing when you're facing these big, big time teams. When you look at your career, the one thing, and I know you wanted to get here and win an NCAA tournament game, but when you look at your career and the fact that you got to this stage three times, is that good enough for you, or will it always kind of hurt you that you didn't at least get one win? Because you know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more questions for our student athletes? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Open up for questions, Coach. Kevin, you guys fell down that early. Um, ten of your first 14 shots were for three-point attempts. Is that what they were doing in terms of taking away the inside, or is that just something that you guys were looking to do is shoot from the outside? I think the answer to that, when Madison Wolf went in, and we had presence around that basket, that was all the difference for us. And we had a presence early, probably could have out a lot more, but we didn't have that presence. So to answer your question about over 32 was, she did a great job to Madison, and then Madison took her right out and scored on her. We just didn't go out enough. But we didn't go out. That was the issue. Uh, the second quarter, uh, Purdue, you turned Purdue over a lot. Did you feel like that was an opportunity to, to get a little bit closer than what you did at halftime? I, I thought the start of half was really critical for us. And we turned it over the first three times. And we had a wide open shot the first time, and Mary bounced it right off his just because of what so that start of the second half was critical. We didn't start really well, and a lot of it had to do with schematic and the fact that we didn't use the kid down around that basket. And we didn't really get comfortable, that's a good way to describe that. But the start of the second half I thought was really critical for us. And I think we had three straight turnovers in that process that really buried another hole for us, and of course we still got back in it. It was a separate point game. We missed three three pointers wide open in the same possession. And maybe that's fatigue. Maybe I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's rushing it. But you know, we still had opportunities at that. But I thought the start of the second half was really um, critical for us. And unfortunately, we weren't able to put the points on the board. Every one of those turned into six, six points for them. What was the 
was the key for them offensively? You usually hold teams 51 points as the average, and they had that in three quarters. What do you think the key was for them offensively? We turned the ball over. We turned them over 23 times. So we turned it over. We gave them baskets. That's why they scored points. And we not turn it over. Ball security was better. I think a lot of it had to do with the statement I just said before, not having the post presence around inside to be able to score it. I think potentially that would have lowered them a little bit. But ball security hurt us. We gave them 16 points off turnovers, so that um, had a lot to do with it. And any time you start getting a lead, obviously, you start feeling a little bit better about your shots equally as well. So I think we um, gave a little confidence in the process there as well. So our defense played well. That we played hard, that our kids played well for the most part, but uh, yeah, it's mistakes. Kevin, how difficult is it for a mid major to, to come to the NCAA tournament when you are facing the Tennessees, the Princetons, the Purdue's, yeah, and, and have success? Yeah, it is. I mean, you, you're running against Purdue. Last year, you ran against Tennessee. The year before that, we ran against LSU. You know, so the teams you face are very good. But even at that, we played these teams pretty well. You know, and still have an opportunity to advance. But it's not easy. It's not easy to get in here, and it's not easy to advance for anybody, for that matter. It's difficult. You know, does this program need to be more judged on actually getting here and the appearances rather than how many times you win a game? I don't know, Scott. You know, our, I'm really proud of our program. I'm proud of our kids. You know, in the community and in the classroom and on the court. These kids really, they're great people, they're, they're great ambassadors, they're great role models, they, um, they do everything right. They do, you know. And unfortunately, at the end of the year, only one team gets walk away unblemished. You know, and everybody at some point, your season comes to an end. But, you know, I think the whole package of our program um, is good. I, I think it is. I'm very proud of it, I'm proud of the kids we're associated with. When you watch Lindstrom out there, just dominating the boards against these big time schools. Are you pretty confident that she's going to be able to kind of take over that leadership role that Marin's leaving and, and the impact that Marin had on the court? Yeah, you know, Marin's, yeah, Marin was really good. You know, I said before, Marin's probably as good a player as I've ever had, and I've been doing this for better than, better than 30 years. But Jessica Lindstrom's probably the best rebounder I've ever had in my life. So certainly a lot of tenacity and a lot of, a lot of willpower. So, yeah, you know what? These kids work their way up to that spot where the next year it's kind of their turn, so I feel very comfortable that the two seniors we've got coming back, and Allison and um, Jessica, will do a great job leading our crew. Do you have any more questions for Coach? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.